Today on Flywire, I'm going to dredge up a topic that I wrote for an aviation magazine nearly 14 years ago. Um, anyway, it shows that I, I can do the secret steps too. I seem to see a lot of this on uh, YouTube, aviation YouTube videos lately. This one is about the six steps to a good landing. So stick with me on Flywire. Hey, I'm Scott Perdue, and whether you have 10 hours or 20,000, landing is that one task that puts you, the pilot, in the spotlight more than any other. As a good pilot, you grade yourself on everything you do when you fly, right? Taxi, takeoff, climb, cruise, maneuvers, descent, approach, flare, land, all that stuff. But the landing is the only thing that everyone else grades you on every time you fly, and it's the only one that they remember. So uh, when I flew in the airlines, uh, I learned that little old ladies uh, from Peoria, they know a bad uh, landing or even a passable landing from a good one. And uh, they may not have a clue as to how to actually do it themselves, but they are pretty happy to grade it and tell you about it. Uh, so much say for saying goodbye to the packs when, you, uh, uh, when they're offloading. Landing is the most uh, humbling thing we do as pilots do. After a string of so, so ones, you know, finally make a, a, a couple of good ones, and we tell ourselves, at last I've made it, I've learned how to do it. I finally got the hang of uh, doing a landing. And then out of the blue, we're back to our old thumping ways and uh, struggling to find that uh, greaser touchdown that says we finally arrived. You know, you go through a phase like that, and then so back and forth and stuff. It just happens. And you probably know that. So how do you do it? How do you make a good landing every time? Maybe. Uh, that's a question that has uh, fueled many an hour of hangar talk all over the globe. Uh, there's a simple answer, right? It's all about energy management. And that is the simple answer. It is all about energy management. Um, a good landing is like uh, a recipe. Throw in consistency, precision, motor skills, eye-hand coordination, loving with a little thorough understanding of your uh, airplane, uh, the weather, the winds, uh, terrain, and aerodynamics, all that stuff, and put it all together, knead it together and all that stuff, and uh, get your brain processing these things in real time, using your eyes as the primary data entry device. Well, you know, it, it does get complicated, even at one and a half miles a minute. Yeah, imagine doing it at, you know, three. So everyone starts by uh, processing these things uh, manually, mechanically. It has that way we, we learn it. The art of landing comes when you achieve consistency. You put yourself in the moment. Landing is challenging and it's fun. Yeah, tell yourself that over and over. It's This is fun. This is why we do it. It's fun. As a matter of fact, it is the only thing that I personally really enjoyed about flying the airlines. All the rest of it is just trying to avoid being violated, but the landing part's always challenging. So let's take a closer look at those complicating factors. Here's step one, and it's fly the airplane, okay? If you do not fly an airplane consistently, then you have no basis uh, to make rational changes, okay? You change something, does it matter because everything else is all over the board. When you exercise sloppy speed control or wide patterns or sloppy turns, ignoring crosswind inputs, uh, you can't begin to work on your landings. The first thing you should do is be honest with yourself. Do you need dual? Okay. Do you need another clue here to help you figure this out? How precisely do you fly the airplane? Vice, how much do you let the airplane do what it wants? It fly you. Let the airplane fly you, as my dad used to say. Uh, go out and practice landing. Uh, holding, sorry, go out and practice holding your altitude, your heading, using ground references. Uh, you, your speed control by glancing at the airspeed indicator, but mostly looking outside. Feel the airplane. Fly it, fly it precisely where you want it to fly. Whatever the pattern is for your airplane, fly it precisely. The same altitude every time, precisely to the same speed, precisely, precisely, say that three times real fast, uh, the same spacing on downwind. And when you can do this without using all your brain power, you're ready for the next step, okay? And that's the perch, step number two. In the Air Force, uh, the perch is what we used to call the base turn, what we call the base turn point. Um, 
I like it. I think it's kind of a bird-like term, you know? It reminds me of flying, kind of a fluid thing, rather than a mechanical action. Uh, let's talk about VFR, the VFR pattern. If all you ever do is land out of a straight end, well, skip ahead towards the end and uh, the rollout on final part, and uh, you can avoid all the rest of that. So, step two, okay, we, f we uh, flew the airplane, we're on the downwind. Step two is the perch. At this point, I'm gonna assume that you can consistently fly a downwind a downwind, speed, altitude, spacing, all that stuff. You can fly a rectangular pattern or curvilinear pattern. Me personally, I like, to, I like a curvilinear, curvilinear pattern in just about any airplane. And you'll find advocates for either one and maybe they'll get in fist fights. who knows, who cares. The bottom line is that when you fall off the perch, you must manage your energy and the turn in a dynamic environment. Don't forget that the winds play a big factor in the final turn. They're a huge factor, actually. A perfect final turn is like an ILS, okay? Uh, it's a curved ILS, MLS maybe. And speaking from an energy management perspective, a perfectly flown final turn is done without power, okay? That's where your wire needs to be. That's where your spacing needs to be. Uh, what if you have to do it for real? Our sensors for wind effects, turn rate and radius, and the descent rate, th those things aren't perfect, okay? And power is a tool to fix those errors. Manage your energy and your turn all the way around to a smooth touchdown and you've really done something, okay? You've really accomplished something. Project that glide path around the turn all the way to downwind and now you've got your perch point, okay? If you wanna use it, the 45 degree reference is a good place to start. Crosswinds and planning play a big factor in that decision where to perch, okay? Where to turn base. Fly the same spacing on downwind every time and vary the point where you perch according to the winds. If the winds are blowing you away from the runway and final, well, perch a little early. If they're blowing you towards the runway, well, perch a little later. And that way you let the uh, uh, winds influence the turn, okay, instead of using power uh, to correct for the lack of wind, uh, wind planning, okay. Also spacing, because, you know, where do you stop spacing? You know, Cessna guy's doing two-mile spacing and uh, four-mile straight ends uh, from a VFR pattern. Step three, fall off the perch. For example, the venerable B-25 falls off the perch with about 20 degrees of back and about a 500 foot per minute decent rate. A good place to start. This is a good place to start. It really is. But you have to look out the window and judge how the turn radius is uh, shaping up uh, to a point maybe about a thousand feet on final, okay, prior to the threshold, let's say. You do this by looking at the ground and comparing your perceived ground track with the projected one in your mind's eye and the winds, what, what are the winds are doing to affect your path through the air, okay? You gotta cross check your actual path with the planned path continuously throughout the approach, okay? And after a while it becomes second nature and you detect whether you're high or low, I call it the wire. Uh, and what you need to do to fix that. The final turn can be a killer, okay? This is one of the top killers. If the winds are pushing you too wide of the runway, well then you have to increase your turn rate. It's an aerodynamic uh, physics thing and you don't have a choice. The turn radius should take you to the rollout point about a thousand feet short of the threshold, as I said. The only way to, to, to stay on that line, that wire, is to adjust your turn rate. If the winds are overshooting, pushing you wide, you increase your turn rate by adding bank angle, okay? <clears throat> increase your bank angle. Most of the time, you don't need to add G or back pressure at all. Just increase your bank angle. I know that uh, that's going to freak some of you guys out, but all I can say is, well, you know, grow up. That's the way it works. What makes overshooting winds a killer is that most uh, pilots have a natural, in a natural tendency to just pull more G okay, to, to increase their turn rate. Um, just adding back pressure though changes the turn rate, sure, but more than that, it, uh, sl it slows the airplane and you get close to an accelerated stall. And that happens quite often. That's where you, you that's the killer part of it, okay? Once that happens, you're screwed. Screws, it, it screws up your descent profile altogether, just pulling G, okay? More G is not the answer. More bank angle is. Increase your turn rate by using the vertical. Just roll in more bank and hold the same amount of back pressure uh, next time and see how much better the turn rate 
works out, okay? The turn tur works out as a whole. A stall spin on the final turn does not help us make a good landing, okay? It's just done. What do you do if you're undershooting the runway? Okay, well, put it simply, you just roll out some of that bank. Adjust your turn rate by rolling out of the bank. The turn is dynamic and changes from second to second, especially in high winds. And somewhere there, somewhere in that final turn, you'll pass through a shear zone where the winds change. Keep looking out the window, adjusting your turn rate all the way down to the roll up. One more thing to remember is energy management. You have to adjust your descent rate as well. To fly that ILS, that wire uh, around the pattern, the VFR pattern, you have to use your vertical speed as one of the energy management tools. In this area, there are folks that will argue with both sides of the pitch power equation, but for this discussion, pitch is for airspeed and power is for glide path. Whatever your uh, base power setting is uh, in the approaches, uh, excess power should be used to slow your descent rate and power reduction should be used to increase your descent rate, okay? All, all done at the same uh, indicated airspeed. You don't want to fly a different airspeed. You want to fly the same airspeed. You want to manage your descent rate. Let's use your hand for a moment, okay? Uh, so look around and uh, make sure no one's watching. All right, I don't see anybody. Now stick your arm out and then hold your hand out flat to the floor, okay? If what you do is you look down your hand like this, you're looking at the runway, uh, looking at the window and you see this for the runway, well, that means you're on the low side, okay, of the glide slope, you're flat. I like to call it flat. You gotta add power while uh, holding the correct airspeed and then your the runway starts to change and starts to look a bit like that, okay? Uh, that means you're high on glide path, okay, down here like this. What you wanna see is an intermediate, okay? So you pull power at that point if you're too high and try a slip to increase descent rate, maybe. Somewhere in between is a good three degree glide path and that's where what you're looking for. Get used to looking for it. Build that picture in your mind so you can see it over and over. That's my three degree glide slope. That's what I'm looking for. Descent rate and turn rate are two different things. Sure, they do influence each other, but correct them individually. Don't try to do two things at once. Always keep in mind that the situation is dynamic and changes each second. Keep looking out the window and judging your progress. Step four is rolling out on final. Uh, if you do, uh, plan to roll out on final with about a thousand feet uh, to the threshold, you give yourself time enough to assess what the winds are doing and then fix any mistakes. Set up for the final, okay? Fast jets plan on rolling out of the final at about a mile, okay? For slower airplanes, about a thousand feet will actually do. Give yourself time to crab into the wind, line up on the center line, and make your final adjustments, okay? Uh, crabs work, all right? Um, but the number one error, error I see uh, when flying with other pilots, bar none, is right here. You have to drive it into the flare point, okay? You're on final, you got your crab going, all that stuff, you set your wing low, now you gotta drive it into the flare point. You just have to. There are a lot of errors are induced because the point uh, that because the pilot's uncomfortable with ground rush, okay? Know that you're, you'll begin to see ground rush, uh, fight the temptation to level off or to check your descent too early. It really screws up the end game of the entire flare and touchdown. Literally, the entire flare and touchdown process is totally changed with that one maneuver. I check my descent too early. Uh, it's anyone's guess now where your touchdown's gonna be because you're gonna have to manage your energy and you know, you're gonna float all the way down. Who knows, it's terrible. If you fly with me, that's one of the phrases that's going to ring in your ears. You're going to be tired of hearing it. Drive it in, drive it in, drive it in. Okay? If you do have that crosswind, well, you have to put in the airplane in a wing low attitude. Frankly, uh, not many airplanes actually are happy to land in a crab. There are a few, and I've flown a few of them. T-38, the F-15, or those. Uh, later, when you're proficient, you can try doing it uh, in the flare, but for now, I, I want to say just before you cross the threshold is when you set in the wing low attitude, okay? And what I do is I use my foot to line the nose up with the runway and then aider, and aider on into the wind to stop the drift. This puts the upwind wheel low, and that's where you want it on touchdown. If you do it the other downwind wheel, well, now it's a pivot point, okay? Resist the tempta temptation to take out your crosswind input until after you're done with the rollout. Leave it in, leave that aileron in. It actually helps you steer down the runway, okay? 
Step number five, that flare point, okay? You drove it in, drove it in, drove it in, and you're at the flare point. It's usually no higher than about one wingspan from the ground. Whatever airplane you're flying depends on the airplane, it does, but somewhere in there. You can check your descent rate here with a slight back pressure on the elevator. And uh, most important things you, you should do is shift your eyes to the far end of the runway, okay? I call this looking far, okay? Look far. You don't actually focus on anything out there. You use your peripheral vision to judge your drift and your descent rate. It's very important to shift your eyes, okay? Otherwise, if you're just gonna leave, look where you're, you've been looking, your aim point, you're gonna pound in the runway because uh, you don't, uh, you're not judging your, your descent rate, okay? Uh, you might have your drift fixed, but you're not gonna fix your descent rate. Step six, that's six, okay? That's the hand language. The touchdown, okay? Now this is the money shot, okay? This is what you practice for and everyone grades you on, on uh, your abilities. This is your pilot reputation. All that other stuff is just to get you here consistently. The first thing you must understand is here is aerodynamics. The airplane is slowing down and you're entering ground effect. You started on speed with or without power. Well, it should be off now or very low unless the winds dictates, uh, dictate otherwise. So with the airplane slowing down, it's gonna increase the descent rate. It just is, okay? Your task is to keep the descent rate slow so you don't slam into the ground. And you're gonna do that by adding back pressure, okay? And it's just a little bit. It's just continuously adding back pressure. Beginner pilots fly mechanically. After a while, hopefully, we internalize our lessons and we begin to control the airplane with small pressures. This concept is key to a smooth landing. Let me stomp my foot here. That's the foot stomper, okay? You have to do this smoothly, slowly add back, back pressure to compensate for the loss of lift. While the airplane is slowing, not too fast, are you gonna hang up the descent for a couple of seconds just before impact? Not too slow, are you gonna have a hard landing? Maybe even really a firm landing. Um, drop the mask maybe. <laughs> just enough back pressure to compensate for that loss of lift. That's what you're doing, and you're, that's how you control your descent rate, your energy management, and touchdown. The secret is that you don't actually stop adding back pressure until the wheels are on the ground. Okay, to do a nice landing, you've got to execute the maneuver all while holding runway alignment, drift correction, and all that other pilot stuff. Sounds like fun? Yeah, it's a challenge. Every time you land, it's a challenge. When you put it this way, it sounds easy, right? And all you have to do is walk, talk, and chew gum at the same time as you pet your head and rub your stomach. <laughs> Seriously. Now you know the secret. You can go out and do a roller, okay? Uh, that, that's how you do it. Practice it, get better at it, and um, be consistent. That's the key. And one more thing, frankly, is uh, when you reach the roller level, you're gonna find out that you're still on that treadmill. No one's perfect, nobody is. Uh, but it's nice to have a roller uh, every, every now and again, okay? No one said this pilot thing is easy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Flywire. Here's the secret uh, that you actually, here's the secret. It, this, oh.